My name is Hobo Tom. Part of the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling podcast, and I'm t- and I'm here to talk to you about money in the bag. Wait, this is the money in the bank show. This is the money in the bank review by WWE. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling web path web page. I'm sorry. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is back at home. Here's the cat. She's upset with me. I just turned her nap. That's okay. Hey, we're today. Tonight it's going to be a little bit about money in the bank. Kind of fun show. It was had its weird up and down moments. There are going to be a few changes made to the show. Make sure I don't remember my cat's tail. There we go. A little bit better view. Eventually, I'm going to have some posters and pictures up. So you just don't see a wall of books and other stuff. Again, let's get the money in the bank. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much, Brian Servant. I hope I didn't get that name wrong. Again, you had your own little personal shout out and your own little personalized video on the last one, which was the NXT results. But this is Money in the Bank. Again, if you disagree with me, please feel free to leave a comment or email. And the email is hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Again, this is Pro Wrestling. Please feel free to comment. I have, I think, only 30 more days until my punishment is up. And then I can live stream. Again, because it was wrestling. Oh, Miami Sunset there. It was. Some good stuff. Make this video kind of quick. Money in the Bank was a weird show. The only reason I say weird, it... It's one of those shows where the good was really good, and then the bad was really bad. Overall, it was a good show. It was fun. It was entertaining. Now, let's start off with the pre-show. Again, a bunch of talking. Then you had the Bludgeon Brothers versus the club. No one thought that the club was winning. Again, this was really kind of a basic match. Oh, more than a squash match. Oh, it, was, it was okay. Yeah, and probably not the show for it. It's a ham sandwich rating. This match was a ham sandwich. They could have had this on NX, on well, not NXT, but on SmackDown. They could have had it on TV anytime. Again, not that compelling. It was okay. So let's start with the real show. We have the kickoff is Daniel Bryan and Big Cass. And... Overall, it wasn't bad. A lot of ham sandwich. A nice, juicy, yummy cheeseburger. And again, it was good. It was kind of good selling by Big Cass. I mean, he was selling the attacks on the knee. The dragon leg whip, kicks to the knee, the knee around post. Daniel Bryan was really aggressive. And the yes lock a couple times. Again, Daniel Bryan was saying, trying to take advantage of his athleticism. Going to the top rope, trying to knock the big man down. Big Cass would eventually come back. Again, kind of a big man style. And miss the big boot. The finish saw Daniel Bryan put him in the heel hook. And now that was it. Probably the end for this feud. And that's not too bad. <laughs> next, next segment was backstage. You have Kevin Owens kissing up to the New Day, trying to figure out which one's going to get in, offering them maple syrup for their with the pancakes, and then he said how he doesn't like pancakes. It was, it was funny. It was like, okay. it was not really filler stuff. Probably for, more so for TV. Then you had Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn. Eh, I mean, they could have showed this match really, again, on TV, TV-rated match. This... Then you have your ham sandwich. Ham sandwich match. 
And again, it was okay. Lashley, again, just was a typical power wrestler. Then he tried to do the sneaky things, tried his comebacks. <laughs> the one thing I can say is that Bobby Lashley and Bobby Roode must go to the same smiling coach because they both smile way too much. And with this, Lashley was more of the heel and showing more heel tactics than Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn seemed like the sympathetic baby face. It was just weird. Again, the ham sandwich. Again, they could have shown this on TV. The same smiling school. Maybe this will lead to a Lashley heel turn. Who knows? Again, a ham sandwich match. Then you have Elias versus Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental title. Again, Elias is, is good. He's getting much better on the guitar. I think he was faking being a bad guitar player. I think it's easier if you're a good guitar player to be bad while acting versus being a bad guitar player and trying to be good. But again, he just runs, he, he does a typical run down the crowd, which is getting fun. It, it does feel more special when he does this on pay per views versus every, everyday kind of TV things. And I think for some reason, I think Eric Rollins, when, um, not Rollins, but Elias says, I'm going to leave. They start doing CM Punk chants. But you can understand. Uh, for there again, the intro seemed, seemed good. Um, it was very slow pace to start. I mean, it was a good back and forth. I mean, Seth, and I hope he didn't re-injure his, his knee again. It just seemed really, and this may be a small critique, but all the WWE wrestlers, you seem to know their spots. Like there's a five moves of death from John Cena. You know it goes. Shoulder tackle, shoulder tackle, back body drop, five knuckle shuffle, AA. While Cena wins. Seth is kind of getting into that range. I'm kind of scared of because you know he's always going to have the suicide splash, Falcon Arrow. I wish they would get a little more unpredictable with their moveset. Again, just this kind of a minor critique. I mean, it was a little good match. It was, it was fun. It was fun. It wasn't anything great. And again, because of that, doesn't it? What the heck? Again, a very basic match. Very much a cheeseburger match. And it was okay. It was what it was. Seth wins for the roll up. It was okay. Then you had the women's money in the bank match. So you had Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch versus Ember Moon versus Lana. There's no way in English, which was weird. Versus Natalia, versus Alyssa Bliss, versus Charlotte. One, two, three. Versus Naomi. No, I was missing one. Sorry. And uh, only com my only complaint about this is that the interest takes so long. It's like, you know what? They need to have like an abbreviated. Like I know the World Cup does where they have like the two minute anthem versus the whole elongated anthem. Maybe they just need to speed that up a little bit. And it makes it easier to watch because because I mean you can always get something more to drink. It's always good. And people get their pictures in live. Because I think by the time it gets to the fourth or fifth person. It's like, eh, whatever. I mean, Sasha Banks, she, she's going to break her neck again one day. She can't take bumps. I mean, she, could, she took a pretty nasty bump getting cross body onto the ladder. Lana's looking much better. Lana's looking darn good as a, as a pro wrestler. They say they lost her Russian accent. I know she's from Tennessee. But again... She starts to look good, and, and she's starting to be more integrated. She's taking her bumps. She's, 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 she's getting more involved. It's, it's good. 
then you have Becky Chance. You have Becky and Charlotte starting to work together, kind of tease a little bit. Again, this was really fun. It, it also started to get a little bit brutal with the ladders. Oh, and there was some blood. There was actually a lot of blood in this pay per view. I think Seth Rollins busted open his lip. There was a little blood. I mean, it's not like you, you don't you don't juice yourself on your lip. I mean, and I'm sure that happened. And that could happen even when when he was doing his suicide dive, and he just lands funny. I mean, that's that's normal. Again, the women started to get kind of brutal with the ladders. Again, this was a fun match, though. This gets the Flav Mignon rating. It was good. And Alexa Bliss, gosh, actually, I'll, I'll save that. Alexa Bliss won. Really good, though. Fun. Um, then you had a segment with Kurt Angle and Paige. <laughs> Crangle mentioned Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. Probably he's, he's good friends with Samoa Joe. A little bit of a tease if he's gonna if he's gonna steal anyone from Raw or SmackDown. Back there at teen a teen a days, Paige kind of mock Corbin steps in. Paige kind of mocks Corbin by saying, "Oh, you're relieving your failed money in the bank cash in." Ha 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 ha! And this. Led to a gender versus brain match. I mean, it is what it was going to be. Neil Singh's there to get beat up. I'm kind of getting used to that. What's that? Neil Singh must have brought this along. This was a ham sandwich match. And it served this purpose. I don't even know why it was on the pay-per-view. This should have been on the pre-show. I mean, the only redeeming thing... Is that there was good outside, good outside the ring work, good action out there. It was okay ring work. Again, Sting still gets beat up. Gender, I think he cut himself the hard way or something because he was bleeding too. Yeah, two times the blood. That's that's odd. And this there was those yeah, oh, oh. and Smarky crowd. It was okay. It wasn't it wasn't too bad. And it was a ham sandwich match. Then we have Oscar and Carmella. And I mean, this was again an okay this was an okay match. I'll talk about this a little bit more in detail. But really it was just I guess and, and it's that's good. I mean it's a cheeseburger. Cheeseburgers are good. Um Oscar dominated early. Carmella has a great looking super kit. She should have a super kit. The young bucks. Oscar's just a queen of strong style, and Carmella is a screamer. You hear her all over. And then all of a sudden, James Ellsworth appears, or at least some guy dressed in an Oscar mask, an Oscar robe. James Ellsworth, shame on you. Distracted Oscar led up to a roll up victory. All right, Carmella, I hope something like an Asuka versus James Ellsworth on either Raw or maybe even Extreme Rules. That'd be kind of good. She's got some payback. Yeah, it was a cheeseburger match. It was, it was good. Hard to screw up. It's a cheeseburger. Then, I have no idea why WWE did this. But then they had AJ Styles. Versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And don't get me wrong, this was a filet mignon match. Much better than their backlash match. Hopefully it sets up something for either Extreme Rules or SummerSlam. I do want to see this go one more show at least. Again, why, 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 WWE? This should have been the main event. Mm, it's not third from last. It's not a tease. It's not the curtain jerker. I mean, this should be the main event. And the only reason why it shouldn't have... I guess the only reason why is something might... Something wonky might happen during the women's Raw title match. Get to that next. Again, this is amazing. It's, I mean, it's a step below their Wrestle Kingdom. 
it's paced so well. Starts off slow, and then it builds to a crescendo. And once it gets to that top, I mean, it just stays up there. There, there's no down. It's really good. And the pace picks up. All of a sudden, AJ Styles realizes, "Hey, Shinsuke Nakamura is doing everything to me. I'm going to do everything I can do to him." You have chair shots from AJ. AJ gets low blow by Nakamura. There's tables involved. I think one aspect is AJ does the Styles clash from the steps to the floor. I mean, this was really good. This should have been on Matt Blast. I mean, even the crowd was like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. And they were excited. They were hot over this match. That was a fun, good match. Les Mignons. Again, I, with the rest of the show, you kind of see why they did it. Doesn't mean I have to like it, though. Again, if you disagree with me, say, hey, that's the perfect place. Send me a comment. Worst comes to happen, I say, eh, you're wrong. I still like my opinion. And my opinion on pro, pro wrestling. Then you had Nia Jax versus Ronda Rousey. And this actually got bumped up from a surf and turf match to a filet mignon. So again, you either have the really good with the woman's money in the bank. Oh, the woman's money in the bank was eh. Yeah, the really good with AJ, Nakamura, Nia Jax, and Rousey, and the very low. So it's that weird, weird pay per view. Again, the highs were high, the lows were low. What can you say? But Nia Jax and Rousey. Again, very quick start by Ronda, trying to end the match quick, which is good. Which is good. It's smart against a bigger opponent. Again, you have a classical difference of technique. You have power versus technique. Again, Ronda, she tried to do stuff off the top rope, and I know when I first went up the top rope, that's a tall way up, and she had the the legit. Oh, wow, this is taller than I thought. This is higher than I thought it's going to be. A, a legit nervous look. I think I've never done this before. And Nia Jax with a crossbody. I mean, the only thing is that she did hit toss, and I think she kind of botched a little bit. I mean, not bad. I mean, but no one wins after just a hip toss. I mean, Ronda looked good. Nia Jax looked good. And then Alexa Bliss cashes in. She takes out Ronda Rosie. Beats up on Nia Jax. DDT, Twisted Bliss. Alexa Bliss cashes in. And we have a new Raw Women's Champion, Alexa Bliss. Five feet of fury. Maybe four foot five feet of fury. Again, that's depending on you count the two inches on her wrestling shoes. So this led to the men's money in the bank. Again, this was a really fun match. I mean, I'm going to give it really the surf and turf. The surf and turf. It was, it was fun. The only thing I'll say is that it was predictable. It was Smojo versus Finn Balor versus Rusev versus Kevin Owens versus Bob Arud, who was glorious, versus the awesome Miz. Versus get these hands of Braun. And all of a sudden, all three members of the New Day show up. Gonna argue a little bit. Kofi Kingston steps in the ring. Kofi Kingston is not going to win Money in the Bank. Would have been interesting. Eh, eh, not going to happen. Um, for really, the first part, it was a tale of a couple, tale, tale of a couple of parts. I think there were various chapters in the matches. Chapter number one, seven on one. Get the big guy out of there. Seven, all seven men, Joe, Finn. Rusev, KO, Rude, Miz, Kofi, team up against Braun Strowman. Makes sense. And then after that, kind of broke down a little bit. <laughs> Miz tried to climb up. Again, being the very sneaky heel that he is, which is what he does best, try to sneak up the ladder. Samoa Joe said, eh, eh. And then he had that... Oh, I'm sorry. 
And yeah, the tables involved. Ten knows, I think, hit someone through a frog splash. Uh, Kevin Owens actually went through a table after being choke slammed from the ladder by Braun. This was good, fun action. And then you had amazing sequences. They really did book Rusev strong. They booked him the way he should. Um, at the end, Braun Strowman is too much. Braun Strowman goes up, gets a briefcase. Braun Strowman is going to be the champion come SummerSlam. And I'm not too sure if. Brock Lesnar is being booked in Extreme Rules. Well, what's going to happen with that? But it should be interesting to see what happens. And that's really Money in the Bank in a nutshell. And my name is Hobo Tom. I should have had my Money in the Bag aluminum. But yeah, I don't feel like getting that now. It's all getting ready to be cashed in, actually, tomorrow. Again, please share, like, comment, and subscribe. And coming soon, Southern Pro Lucha Libre. And thank you very much. Have a good night. Bye.